Hi, my name is Zach Schwartz, and I'm presenting Metatext. Now, Metatext taps directly into Twitter.com. And Twitter.com is a large social network where people can tweet about short, uh, short messages in 140 characters or less, what they're doing, what's on their mind, where they're going. It could really be about anything at all. Now, Twitter has been very prominent in society in recent years. We've seen it used during the uh, Iranian elections in 2009, the Egyptian Revolution, and now most recently in the tsunami that happened in Japan. Now, there are companies and tools out there that are devoted to analyzing the stock market and monitoring the financial health of the nation. But there isn't really anything out there that can uh, track the pulse of society or monitor social trends. That is what Meditext, my program, aims to achieve. Now, these live tweets come through my program, and I can predict which category each tweet belongs to. And then I can track the popularity of these categories over an extended period of time. So let me bring up this, where we can visualize some of this data. And what you're looking at here is a graph of one week's worth of tweets related to the food category. As you can see, this graph is fairly stable. It has a constant up and down trend throughout the week. And this makes sense because people tweet at very predictable times when they're going to eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But now we can compare this and contrast this to a different uh, category, such as sports. And you can see that this is vastly different because people are more apt to tweet about sports during large and important events. And we saw recently the, uh, the Masters tournament for golf last weekend, and we saw a nice upward trend. But if you really want to find out why people are tweeting about a specific topic and why there's an upward trend, you can view the tweets themselves and start reading some of these tweets. Can't read it from back there, but people uh, write about football and basketball, NCAA is a very popular topic right now. And then you could just read a lot of tweets and find out why people are tweeting about that category. Now for my program, I chose a set of high level topics, sports, entertainment, health, etc., but it is capable of much more. Imagine a social marketing firm who wants to identify all the nightlife related tweets in the East Village of Manhattan, or a campaign manager who, who wants to identify all the uh, political related tweets in their candidate's district. All of this would be possible with my project. Now let's look at some obvious tweets that my program may encounter. The first one is a weather report, and this is fairly simple for my program to identify. There's a lot of uh, weather terms in that tweet. The second one is talking about weight loss, which is a fairly common theme for the health category on Twitter. But there are more challenging tweets that my program needs to identify. The first one, watching Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. My program has no concept of what Charlie and the Chocolate Factory actually is, but it was still able to identify that I was talking about entertainment. The second one, tell them that it's human nature dash MJ. Now, I didn't even know what this meant, but my program was able to figure out that it was lyrics from Michael Jackson's song written in 1982. And the last one, again, my program does not know who the Cavs are or who LeBron James is, but it was still able to identify that it was talking about basketball and talking about sports. So how does this work? First, you have to get all the tweets and pre-process. There's millions of tweets coming in every day. They're in any language and in any format. So first, we need to identify only the English tweets. And even the tweets that are written in English isn't real English. It is a Twitter speak, a text-like language. Everything is shorthand. Everything is slang. So my program identifies all these slang terms of mass over 700 of them and replaces them with their English counterparts. So at the end, you actually have a readable and English structured language uh, sentence. The biggest technical challenge for my project is trying to interpret a tweet. How do you take a set of words and convert that into a set of values that a computer can understand? And using the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory example, I computed uh, the word frequencies for thousands of words and associated those frequencies with their uh, respective topics. Now the word chocolate is highly associated with the food category, naturally. And therefore, I, I increased the score for food rather than the other topics. But as we know, this is incorrect because this tweet is related to entertainment. Now, the weighted frequencies, they're very useful, but we need more information to uh, correctly categorize a tweet. Therefore, my program uses Google and Wikipedia to acquire a set of topics for what Charlie and Chocolate Factory actually is. And it retrieves novel, book, film, and fiction. 
Now my program knows that these new terms that it has acquired are highly associated with the entertainment category. And then it now uh, puts those words back through the program, increases the score for entertainment over the score for food. So we have now correctly scored this tweet more appropriately. Now the final step is classification, where I use a machine learning algorithm. Now machine learning is divided into two parts. The first part, I had to manually classify about 5,000 tweets into their respective categories. Then we compute the score of those 5,000 tweets, just as we did in the previous slide, and store that data in a database. The second part of machine learning is taking new tweets that come in, tweets that we have not seen before. We can compute the score of that tweet, just like every other tweet, and based on the data that we have collected from the previous 5,000 tweets, we can predict the category that belongs to this new tweet that has arrived. Now, with this, pro with this program, this project, it has been uh, an incredible challenge identifying all these topics. But once we've collected all of this data from Twitter, we can really do some interesting things. And I'm looking forward to improving my project in the future. And uh, thank you very much.